Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Sir Cypher here with Company of Heroes 2. Company of Heroes 2 is the sequel to one of my favorite games of all time, which is the RTS by Relic Software, Company of Heroes. Uh, while the original game was on the Western Front and focused mostly on the invasion of Normandy, this is on the Eastern Front. I was actually in the beta for this when it came out. I didn't really like it that much, but I've decided that maybe I didn't really give it a fair a fair shot. So I'm going to play through the campaign on hard mode, trying to complete all the optional stuff, and ramble about uh, history as I do it. So let's begin. Uh, this is going to be quite a few cuts. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is going to be quite a few cutscenes. So I'll try and leave a marker uh, if you don't want to watch a bunch of stuff. Also, the, the, the cutscenes have all these flashes in them, which are kind of annoying. Um, I don't really know what they were going for. No excuse for deserting your boats. You ordered them killed! The Red Army knows how to take care of its friends. I've ordered many deaths. Which specifically are you referring to? Lev Abramovich is so Oh god, these cutscenes. The punishment is death. You know, I think they're going for a more like apocalypse now feel for this game, rather than the original which had more of a saving private Ryan band of brothers feel but I think they went a little overboard um, I haven't actually beat the whole game yet you know so you're along for the ride with me um, I've just played a couple missions ahead I'm assuming I can beat this on hard if I can't well then I guess I'm bad at video games I come all the way from Moscow to this remote piss hole, and this is how you greet your old commanding officer. What do you want from me, Colonel? I wanted to show you something. I can realize this. Ah. Gonna have like a on these seizure. You condemn a man several times over. But before that happens, comrade. First, I need to know the truth. So, the scene you're about to see will be familiar to basically anyone who's seen any media about the Eastern Front in World War II. It almost feels like they're legally required to include it in any video game or movie or TV sh whatever at the start. It is the defense of Stalingrad, specifically the defense of the River Volga. It's in the original Call of Duty. It's an enemy at the gates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually the second year of the war. Operation Barbarossa was in 1941. They didn't manage to take Moscow. So, round two the next year, they decided to go south towards Stalingrad, towards the Caucasus. Oscuses. Anyway, to like the south, southern Russia where the oil field and stuff were. And, you know, the Russians. Well, they say Russians, but it's more than just the Russians. It's the whole of the uh, United Socialist, Soviet Socialist Republics. 
So there's other groups of people in there as well. Besides just Russians. Um, all fighting. Alright, so... Basically, the Germans pushed basically all the way to the river. And the Russians were just frantically just throwing troops into the city to try and keep them from seizing the river um, and taking the whole city. Okay. Excellent camera system. So basically, we can't really lose this mission. We've got stormtroopers or shock troops, which are uh, Russian kind of like assault infantry uh, with uh, submachine guns and uh, body armor. Slightly little known fact is body armor was used in World War II by certain groups of people. Just wasn't used that often because it was just too heavy. Uh, Russian used steel body armor for their... Uh, shock troops and uh, engineers it was also used a lot in World War One but the problem is is that it didn't stop uh, rifle rounds and so when most of the enemy machine guns and rifles are firing full power rifle cartridges it's not that useful if you've never played Company of Heroes it is an RTS but instead of individual units for the most part it's squads which are you know groups of people who move and shoot together and have uh, abilities. Uh, it also has a cover system. When you see me mouse over stuff, it'll put little green dots, uh, which describe how good the cover is. The cover is directional. Um, okay, I guess I supported the tank, but it didn't really help it. So we'll just sit here and uh, let's see here. Oh, these guys don't have grenades. <laughs> Excuse me? The time has come to push the fascists out of Stalingrad, comrades. Lieutenant Isakovich, you will lead the assault. Charge from the docks to the square. Once it's clear, we can bring in support to help crush the German armor that is sure to be waiting. The fascists are well dug in, but their persistence is no match for Soviet zeal and our overwhelming numbers. Do not be discouraged by a few losses. Kill these fascists and show no mercy. All right, so the counterattack has begun. Got a heavy machine gun there. An interesting thing is Company of Heroes kind of gets it right that the sort of battlefield role of the machine gun is often not to kill people it's to deny areas of the battlefield to infantry the purpose of infantry is to advance and if they can't advance then you know they're not fulfilling their role so there is a morale system in company of heroes and certain rapid fire weapons like machine guns will cause infantry to hit the dirt and then they can't advance um but, so let's see, so we can't go through there, there's a heavy machine gun, so we gotta go on a flanking, little maneuver here, Call on extra shock troops. So there is a building system and a economy system and all that, um, but in these missions, you know, we don't have any buildings or anything, so we just keep calling in shock troops. We have a population limit. This determines how many, how much, in, how many uh, people we can bring in. So let's just throw lots of grenades here. Grenades have a little, a little bit of a delay for uh, against human opponents to give them time to react to encourage some kind of some micro. So since my guys all have automatic weapons, I'm kind of just pushing into the enemy because uh, 
At long range, they're actually worse than rifles, but at close range, they're really good. Okay, let's destroy some howitzers. So we got a uh, we got a secondary objective here to save these people in this little building here. My shock troops. Okay. I'll kill this guy. There we go. All right, so let's advance. Throw a bunch of grenades. So normally you would reinforce squads before they die as you see they're getting XP from killing stuff and typically you don't want to lose veteran squads but I don't have any way of doing that so as much as it pains me I just gotta use people till they die. So we'll just keep advancing, keep throwing grenades. The grenades cost um a certain amount of uh, munitions. Yeah, I'm sure they cost 30 munitions. I thought we were done for. Let's get these civilians back to the river. Go. If um, basically instead of like energy, like uh, in a game like StarCraft, where individual units have energy that lets them use their abilities, in this you have munitions, which are kind of like a global. Um sort of resource uh, that is what fuels the majority of the um, special abilities for uh, your guys. I think it's just automatically refilling uh, my munitions. Yeah. So I have unlimited grenades. Because it wants you to use lots of grenades. So we're going over here. We took out the howitzer. Now I guess we'll go back here and kill the rest of these guys so our troops can get through. I guess. As, we, as German little fighter bombers keep flying overhead. Ah, oh, why won't it let me call in another squad? There we go. All these, all these squads have like one dude left. And die, that guy died throwing his grenade. Come on, you can do it. Oh, cool. So you can pick up uh, sometimes enemy weapons. Um, and enemies can often pick up your weapons. It's sort of a... Uh, um, interesting mechanic because it lets your troops get access to sometimes weapons that they otherwise wouldn't be able to get. Let's see. I'll throw lots of grenades because I have unlimited munitions. This is a mid-war Panzer IV. Got the long-barreled uh, 7.5 centimeter gun. Tiger tanks get all the gl glamour, but uh, the Panzer IV is actually the only tank. I think by any military. Maybe just by the German military, I'm not sure. But it's definitely the only tank by the German military that uh, assault service through the whole war. It was being made when the war started, and it was being made up until the very end. Uh, 
because it was uh, kind of their workhorse tank and it was pretty adaptable so they kept finding uh, kept finding new ways to uh, to use it okay how do I have 27 pop I only have three units Whatever. so we can't hurt that tank and company of heroes unlike some games it's like a hard damage system not a soft damage system where it's not like you just do less damage to tanks uh, you just can't hurt tanks so we got to go over here and steal this anti-tank gun but there's a machine gun in the way so we got to throw a smoke grenade first so there's basically three tiers of a uh, of vehicle or I guess two tiers I mean because there's there's vehicles which um, are uh, can be hurt by regular guns and then there's um oh oopsies I'm throwing the wrong kind of grenades <laughs> throw, the, throw the boom grenades throw the ones that go boom um okay but anyway, so there's regular vehicles like half tracks and scout cars and stuff. And uh, regular infantry can hurt those. They just, you know, they don't do that much damage. And then there's things like tanks, which regular infantry cannot hurt at all. So you can crew weapons. So you see three of my shock troopers want to crew this anti-tank gun. This one is a Pac-40. I think it's actually the same gun. That's on this Panzer. Panzer, of course, short for Panzer Kampfwagen. Panzer is just German for armor. Uh, Panzer Kampfwagen is armor, and then Kampf is fight, and then wagon is vehicle. Here we see the um, infamous, or a portrayal, of the infamous Soviet blocking divisions um, during the second year of the war. I think it was the second year. I don't think it took part of the first year. But basically, after a certain point, there was a general order, no retreat, and these things called blocking divisions were formed, which whenever there was a major engagement, they would put kind of politically loyal units that were more trusted on the back line of the engagement and the understanding was that they would you know shoot you um, but my my understanding is is that the modern consensus is that that was fairly rare um, the Soviet Union wasn't in a position to just machine gun troops uh, because you know they uh, you know weren't weren't sufficiently enthusiastic and that uh, most of the time you know, it didn't actually come to that. But, you know, you gotta have a good video game, so, you know, you gotta, gotta, gotta jazz it up a little bit. Okay. So I put, should probably throw a smoke grenade first, but whatever. I'm just gonna run out there and throw grenades at them. Now, my regular troops can hurt this armored fighting vehicle. I'll just do it because it's like they can. So, they can't just run out here and shoot it with machine guns. Um, it just is not uh, super efficient. Alright. So now we'll just clear these trenches. Oopsies. A squad of infantry has been killed. Death before retreat. So we'll throw lots of grenades. Everyone loves grenades. 
I guess I can use this to kill this armored car. Or I can just shoot it. Armored cars aren't really bulletproof. They're more like bullet resistant, you know? Like if you drop a smartphone in the pool and you fish it out really quick, it probably won't be broken. But it's not like it's waterproof. If you try hard enough, you can break it with water. Um, Alright, so we gotta go up in here. Take the railway yard. Our giant wads of troops. Okay, you know, the, like, the Germans just took this area. And they've already had time to put, like... Wait, why aren't these Nazi flags? Why are these... Crosses? Huh. I mean, I get why they're, like, maybe iron crosses, but I would think they'd be Nazi flags. I wonder if they censored it for some reason. Hmm. That's it. The are to break. Well, we'll see. It's a nice statue of kids with an alligator. Uh-oh. War crimes. Maybe they should have been wearing helmets. Maybe they would have won. Head's the most dangerous part of the body. The Always wear a helmet. Alright. So mission one. Complete. I'm going to be playing through all the missions. Expect the new video every couple of days. Maybe I'll play some multiplayer. Maybe I'll play the American campaign too. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, and uh, have a nice day.